don't have a scientist who may well kill themselves in a botched experiment that we haven't actually sent in the health and safety form for. If you're from Hammersmith Council, of course we have. We're just larking about. So, please welcome the first possible death of this evening. Please welcome to the stage, Greg Fox! <laughs> I want to do something very dangerous and very ambitious. Live algebra! Yes, you heard me right, live algebraic manipulation right here on this stage. Are you guys cool with that? Yes, that's the sort of crowd we want. Oh, and uh, just to let you know, I'm also going to be dropping this seven kilogram bowling ball down this ramp, it's going to go round this one metre radius loop the loop, and I am going to be sat right in the middle. And here's my question to you, what is the minimum height that I need to drop this bowling ball from in order for it to go all the way round this loop the loop and miss my head? So let's have a little think, work out what it is, it's a one metre radius loop the loop. You know what? We can work it out. Let's have a look. Here is our loop the loop. Let's place a ball up there, there's the bowling ball, and let's also put me kind of pooping myself a little bit in the middle. <laughs> so the question is, what is the minimum height that we need to drop this bowling ball from in order for it to go all the way around the loop the loop and miss my head? When you lift the bowling ball up, you're doing work against gravity. You're loading it up with gravitational potential energy. We can plot that up here, there it is, it's at a height h. The potential energy PE is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height h. All right, fine. Then we drop the ball, the ball drops. Who sniggered? <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of ball drop gags, right? So I release the ball, I release the ball. It then gains kinetic energy. KE, so we can pop that up here, it's half times the mass times its velocity squared. So far, so good. Now it's potential up here, it goes down and it all goes into kinetic, and then it goes back up to potential again as it goes up around the loop. If it was an ideal system, if no energy was lost whatsoever, you'd be full potential, full kinetic, back up to full potential again. So if it is an ideal system with no energy is lost, then surely the lowest point, the minimum height we need to drop it from is 2R, the top of the loop. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for a good friend of mine and official ball handler for the evening, Mike Sanson. All right, so Mike, please place the ball at 2R. 2R. Is this overly dramatic tension music? Feels it, doesn't it? Okay. The thing is, <laughs> this is an ideal situation. What's going to happen, even if it does make it back up to the top, it's not going to have enough energy to keep going, so it will fall off and hit me on the head. We need enough height for it to go all the way around. So we need to give it a little bit extra height so we get more energy in the system. So, let's take it a little bit higher, a height of H1. That's going to give us this much extra bonus potential energy. That's going to be converted into kinetic energy. And hopefully that might be enough to make it go all the way to the top and to stick to the rails and keep going. Let's have a look at the situation right at the top. There are two forces acting on it. You've got the force of gravity pulling it down, which is mg, and then you've got another force. We need to create a force that's going to stick it to the top of the rails and allow it to keep going. What force is that? Centrifugal force! My favourite of the fake forces, but kind of important when looking at an accelerating rotating reference frame like this. The formula for centrifugal force is mv squared over r. We need to have a big enough amount of height increase to give us that energy to overcome mv squared over r. So let's have a look. We can set them equal to each other, cancel the masses, rearrange the v squared because we're going to need that in a little bit. Let's bring up our potential energy to get energy again. So this is what we're saying. We're going to increase it by a little bit of height, load it up with a bit more of that potential energy. That's going to get converted into kinetic energy and we're going to use that to create that force to keep it stuck on the rails. So all we need to do now is a little bit of manipulation. Substitute that, cancel your m's, cancel your g's and you get h1 it needs to be a half r. Mike! Two and a half R plus a bit because it's the real world, right? And there's friction and air resistance and noise and I like my head. Okay, now you can put on that music again. 
Okay, Mike, two and a half arts, please. So, ladies and gents, get your phones out, because if this works, which I really hope it does, we're all going to get some great footage. If it doesn't work, you can sell it for 250 quid. So, here we go. This is it. Two and a half R. Enough to get around to the top of the loop and the stage start. Let's all count down in three, two, one. No, no, stop. <laughs> we've forgotten something. Do you guys know what we've forgotten? What have we forgotten? Yes! It starts completely static when Mike drops it. But then it rolls, it speeds up as it goes, and rolling a big heavy 7 kilogram bowling ball takes energy. It's going to steal that energy away from that potential energy, which means it's never going to make it to top, and I'm going to prove that to you by doing it. Okay, Mike, we have two and a half plus a bit. Okay, let's drop it in three, two, one. Bang! Right on top of my head, that would have been. Hope you're not applauding that that would have landed on my head. You sick, sick people. All right, so we need a little bit extra height. So let's add that in here. A little bit extra height. I'm not going to go through all this now because I've only got seven minutes for my whole slot here. But I will give you all the formulas. So jot them down. You can do them on the back of the metro on the way home. It's probably a good shout. I know you will. I know at least 73% of you will. So this time it's going to go into angular kinetic energy. All right. So we're not talking half mv squared linear. We're talking the kinetic energy of a rotating sphere. So that's cool, we can plot that. This time it's a half times the moment of inertia of the sphere times the angular velocity squared. Those are the formulas you need to jot down for the way home. There you go. Substitute them in. Cancel out the R's. Get rid of your numbers. Easy does it. Set your potential energy to that because that's where we're going to get this energy from. Substitute your V squared. Cancel your M's. Cancel your G's. H2 equals one fifth R. Oh, yes, we've got it. Right, two plus a half of the fifth. Mike, 2.7 R plus a bit. A yeah, 2.7 R plus a bit, please. This should be it. We should now be uh, totally there. Right, you guys ready for this? Okay, so let's. I'm sorry, guys, that's the end of my slot. Um, that's the theory done. I hope you enjoyed it. That's the most important bit, right? Thanks. Oh, we've got a bit of time. Just go. Do you want to see it? Two, one, go. 